Let's talk about treatment. You know, obviously the diagnosis is made either on the phone. You have the. Do you like to have the conversation with the owner in person? By the way, um, I do. Yeah. It, you know, that's obviously sometimes we end up talking on the phone and we're calling somebody with lab results. Um, but then I like to have them come in and talk to them because I, I definitely think this is something that we want to give them literature. We want to make sure we're, we're answering all of their questions and really talking to them about what it means for their pet to be diabetic. And, 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 I, and I think you when know, we talked about this, we're, we're going to have to tailor the treatment to the animal, to the pet, to the cat or the dog, but also to the owners and to their lifestyle and to their level of comfort. Um, sometimes, you know, a diabetic child or a diabetic person, um, it's really important to have really tight regulation mm -hmm. because of long-term effects of diabetes in people, the vascular effects, the renal effects, the cardiac effects. Um, our goals are different in, in dogs and cats, right? We don't have to have that kind of tight control checking glucose every hour before every meal. What, what are, what, how do you feel about our goals in, in, in having a diabetic pet? I, I agree with you. I think the goals in veterinary medicine, and, and it's important for people to know that, our goal is to obviously ameliorate the clinical signs. So we want a pet not to have to be urinating all the time, urinating in the house, because that's one of the things, too, that's hard as a pet parent. If the pet is having accidents in the house, if the pet is visibly lethargic or not doing well or losing weight, that's stressful to the to the pet parent. And so obviously we want to get rid of the clinical signs and we want to also another major goal in veterinary medicine is to prevent hypoglycemia. So when we start treatment hypoglycemia with, meaning, meaning low, low blood sugar. Low, yeah. yeah. So when we're starting treatment with insulin, we need to make sure we don't go the opposite direction and that we don't lower their blood sugar to a dangerous level. People again, because they can talk, they know they're not feeling well, they know to eat with an animal especially an animal that may be eating only when the person's feeding them twice a day, um, they can't communicate when they're becoming hypoglycemic. So it's really important for us um, as a veterinarian and the pet parent to be in tune with that and make sure that when we start treatment that the pet parent knows what to look for for those signs and that they understand the normal clinical signs and also um, some of the complications of treatment or diabetes itself. Yeah, and, and, and if anything, we err a little bit on the side of a little bit of higher glucose yep. because that what we're really afraid of is that hypoglycemia yes. that can be that can be you know, life threatening. Yes. So what? So we talked about treatment a little bit before, but the areas that we talk about. So there's diet. Mm -hmm. There's the insulin. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess exercise, so weight yeah, loss. Yeah, and, and then ho uh, home monitoring is and another home, really important one. And, and how to monitor the yep. treatment. Yep. Uh, and, and then what? How do you try to tailor your treatment um, to the? type of, to the, to the lifestyle of the, of the dog and of the Well, I, of I the think parents. depending on the pet, so the mm -hmm. first thing mm -hmm. you talked about diet, so mm -hmm. depending on the pet, so with cats, uh, and you mentioned this earlier, diet is really, really important. And recent literature and recent studies have shown that for cats being on a low carbohydrate, high protein canned diet. The cat is can, really, the cat diet. Yes, yeah, yes. is really mm -hmm. beneficial for them. Yeah. And that yeah. it helps not only with weight loss, but it also helps control control their blood sugar levels throughout the day and that changing their diet coupled with insulin therapy uh, has really shown that if you catch diabetes early uh, in the first 90 days, we actually have pretty good success with getting cats in remission. Not all cats, but again, the earlier it's caught, the more likely there's a chance that a cat can actually go into remission, meaning that they won't need insulin. Right, similar to people, yeah. right? Yeah. People with type 2 diabetes, yeah. if they're good with their diet, if they exercise, if they lose weight, often they, they can get off Definitely insulin and yeah. often, off, often off of all drugs. Yeah. So cats are just in that same category. Yeah. And the not one, so lucky with dogs, though. Yes, yeah. And the one thing I would mention is they're not in remission necessarily forever. So um, we, they are still an animal that needs to be monitored. Some cats are in remission for months to years and then eventually will need insulin. So it's something that people are still going to have to really monitor and, and pay attention to and work with their veterinarian. But that's really our goal, again. And two is if we can get a cat in remission, that's great. And and again, we're trying to get rid of the clinical signs, make sure that the pet has a good quality of life, and um, and and doesn't have any kind of hypoglycemic episodes.